I also truly believe that God would never give a brain to someone in the way that it's wired if it wasn't directly going to help them fulfill on their dharma, fulfill on their life purpose, and fulfill on their mission. And that's a huge lesson for me to see because I want to get into the five reasons why I believe that someone with ADHD can actually be an even more powerful manifester than someone with a more normal brain and not to like create separation or this is better than, you know, and this other person's less than, but just like to give the people who feel like this is a disability or this is like a disempowering thing. I want to show you that it's actually a superpower. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. I am so excited to be back inside of my studio at home after doing so many episodes that were Q&A compilations or me on the go, me pre-recording intros because I went on vacation, a very much needed vacation. And so now I'm back and I'm on video. And so for anyone who is listening to me on a podcast app like Spotify or Apple or wherever you're listening to me where it's audio only, I just want you to know that if you go search Manifestation Babe on, um, almost forgot the name, YouTube, if you search me on YouTube, you can actually watch my podcast at least the last, I don't know, I want to say 20 that I've been filming or something around that number. If you're someone who loves to watch video podcasts, just so you know, um, I have that available for you. And if you're like me, where sometimes you watch them and for the most part, you listen via audio because you're listening to me in the shower or you're listening to me in the car, that's cool too. Um, But just so you know, that's an option. And if you can just subscribe, like, comment on the video when you're there, that of course helps my channel a lot. So today's episode is a really good one. I am so excited for this episode because there's been some news broken to me (laughs) that I was not aware of for 31 years of my life. And at age 31, my mom revealed some information to me and it made so much sense of my life. I can't even tell you. And it just gave me such a new perspective into my brain and how I work and how I function and how I relate to people. And also such a powerful look at the power of labels and the power of identity and the power of diagnoses and the power of being told that you are something and it's a good thing versus you are something and it's a bad thing versus you are something and it's a neutral thing, versus you are not that thing and the symptoms that you have are a good thing, or you are not that thing and the symptoms that you have are a bad thing. And I have developed so much appreciation for my mom. My mom is an interesting relationship to me because as you guys know, um, my mom and I have not always been on the same page throughout my lifetime. And there have been many sources of trauma that have come from my mom. Not that my mom like beat me or anything like that. She never abused me. She very much loved me. But my mom was in survival mode when she was raising me. And so a lot of when I look back on my life, you know, I have this negativity bias sometimes towards my mom. um, Where I'm like, God, if she just didn't call me stupid in that moment, right? Like I could have believe that I was smart for once in my life or, you know, that's a bad example because, you know, my mom never called me stupid, but um, something like that along those lines. And when we were in South Africa, my mom and I had a conversation. I don't even know what sparked this conversation, but it shifted me forever in how I view her. Um, And I'm just so genuinely appreciative of her and just love her to death and think she is the most incredible mother for doing this. And Also, of course, being the Libra that I am, I will bring nuance, of course, into this where sometimes it's actually a good thing to get a diagnosis because, for example, when I was going through my postpartum weight loss journey of frustration and being like, I don't know why I am eating the same that I've always eaten when I have been in my fittest, best shape of my life and I work out six days a week and I am not dropping weight, what is happening, right? And I just 
a matter of weight loss for aesthetics, though, yes, of course, everyone wants to look good. Okay. Like, let's just acknowledge that. Let's not beat around the bush. Like, it's okay to want to look good. It's okay to want to be attractive as long as you do it for yourself primarily, right? As long as you do it for the right intention, not validation from external sources, but truly coming from like, I want to look good for myself because when I want to look, when I look in the mirror, I want to be proud of what I see. Okay. So by getting a diagnosis of like, yo, you have mold toxicity, you have glyphosate toxicity, you have this, you have that. Essentially, this diagnosis gave me a set of tools of like, okay, because you have this, here are tools to help you get rid of this or manage this or overcome this or, you know, in the sense of like mold toxicity, here's how to detox it. So that's very helpful. Okay. So you guys know me, my favorite word is nuance. So I also want to um, share just a very quick disclaimer that I am by no means an expert on neurodivergence or ADHD. In fact, I didn't know that I was ever diagnosed with ADHD until literally a month ago. And so <laughs> I just want you to know that primarily I'm coming from my own experience and just how I have seen my own neurodivergence or how my brain works or how the ADHD manifests in my life as this beautiful gift and superpower, especially in how it was presented to me from my own mother and how she really hooked into the positives of being ADHD or being neurodivergent, which my mom also is herself. And my husband is like an extreme neurodivergent. I can't even tell you. (laughs) Sometimes I'm like, what? Right. We have like very similar brains, but he's like more extreme. Right. So there's, of course, scales and levels to this. So just that quick disclaimer that I'm only speaking from personal experience, like don't come here looking for expert advice or expert opinion or like I've done a ton of research on this. I've done just enough to like help me make sense of the last month of my life in in the sense of like me learning this information. Anyway, um, (laughs) also makes so much sense why I podcast with notes in front of me. Like I have, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see sometimes I'll look down on my phone because if I don't, the ADHD is going to send me like, oh, look at the trees. They're moving around. Or if I see someone in front of my window, God forbid someone comes up to my front door that I can see from my office, like all bets are off. I don't know what I just, I don't know what I'm talking about, right? And I tend to record my podcast at the same time as my neighbor's gardeners. I feel like I align this perfectly every time. So please forgive me if you hear some gardening sounds (laughs) coming through the microphone. Okay, so before I go into like the backstory, before I go into the tips that I have and specifically how neurodivergence, and I'm specifically speaking about ADHD when I talk about it here, how it's actually your superpower and how it actually makes you a better manifester. And I truly believe that I'm a better manifester. Like this is what made me such a powerful manifester. And if you're someone who's not ADHD, not neurodivergent, don't take this as like, oh, and you're not, right? It's just for someone who feels so disempowered by a diagnosis or by how their brain works, I just want to give you a ray of light and a ray of hope to just truly see that you are insanely gifted and that God would never give you a brain that wasn't destined for success, that wasn't in alignment with your dharma and your life mission and your life purpose. It wasn't meant to fit into society, okay? So what society presents as like normal or not normal, or this is going to make you successful, or this is going to make you less successful. I'm sorry, but God never said that. God never decided on that. Whatever you believe in, universe, God, source, angels, whatever the fuck, higher self. Like there is no deity that came down from the sky and said this is this way and that is that way, right? It's all our interpretation based off of what we decided as a society, as a collective, as a culture of what is normal and not normal, what is acceptable and not acceptable, what's powerful, what's not powerful, what's going to make you successful, what's not going to make you successful. Okay, before I go any further, I just want to remind you that MBA 
my Manifestation Babe Academy is launching on October 14th. And yes, I will be doing a workshop right before. I always offer something free for everyone, um, very transformative content that I provide just for everybody to have their lives transformed before we dive into MBA. It's usually like a prerequisite um, where I'm getting your mindset, your consciousness, your vibration, your energy just elevated to a certain level where you're ready to really dive into a program such as the Manifestation Babe Academy with me, which is not the smallest program in the world. It's actually quite a big in-depth program. This is my ultimate manifestation program that teaches you the entire A through Z, literally everything you could possibly need to know, want to know, not even realize you need to know, right? Like the things you can't even Google because you would never even think of Googling when it comes to manifesting your desires, your dream reality, your dream life, all those components that I've thought through so carefully for the last, what, 16, 17, 15, I lose count now, over 15 years of knowledge that I have, I have condensed it into the Manifestation Babe Academy. So previous students of mine have reported, you know, I really love to hear my student feedback I create around my students. Obviously, you've heard some of my Q&A sessions from the previous podcast episodes, um, and my students constantly to this day, every day, DM me telling me how transformative MBA has been in their lives. And they have reported things like not only have they finally manifested the things that they so deeply wanted and just couldn't figure out how to do it, but they are so much happier. They're the happiest versions of themselves. They finally feel fulfilled in their lives for the very first time ever. They have confidence. They came into MBA with low self-esteem and I help them raise that self-esteem up where they truly feel like the most badass versions of themselves. And that's what makes me like truly the happiest. Like yes, money, homes, cars, uh, dream careers, right? Are nice. Promotions are nice. You know, engagement rings are nice. Pregnancies are nice and things like that. Like the things that we come into MBA to manifest. But I think the greatest journey is like watching someone come into MBA and what they look like just even energetically when they leave. And it's like a completely unrecognizable version of themselves. It's so incredible to witness. My favorite thing is, you know, a lot of my students tell me that for the first time ever, they feel truly safe. Like they feel so taken care of cosmically. They they just, they know that, that not every burden lies on their shoulders and that there is a force, there are laws, there is a source of love that is conspiring all together in their favor to bring them what they want in life, where they don't have to work as hard. They don't have to struggle as hard. They don't have to strive as hard. They don't have to hustle as hard. You can truly just let yourself relax and let yourself surrender into this beautiful unfoldment of life and realize that sometimes the less you work, (laughs) the more manifests in your life. And it's truly incredible. So anyway, if this is something that makes you go, God, Catherine, that sounds so nice. Like I, I really wish that that was you know, my reality or that was something that was possible for me. I'm here to tell you it 100% is. So if you're interested in that, um, you can get on the MBA waitlist right now by heading over to manifestationbabe.com slash MBA waitlist. So M as in manifestation, B as in babe, A as in academy, waitlist altogether, MBA waitlist. I'll also drop it in the show notes. And then I forget, do we have show notes on YouTube? I'm going to make sure we have the link to that in the YouTube section as well for anyone who's watching the podcast. Okay. So let's go into the backstory of this episode. You know, it's obviously titled, I was diagnosed with ADHD, but my mom never told me um, how being neurodivergent made me a powerful manifester. So let me give you some backstory first. So first things first, um, you know, being the teacher that I am, you know, I've had over 55,000 students now in various courses, programs, workshops, things um, not like these are paid students, not my free workshops, but other like paid workshops that I've hosted. So over 55,000 students. And in MBA, I believe we're, fuck, I don't know, like 7,000, 8,000 students, almost 10,000 since I created 
specifically this version of MBA in 2021. And I've been updating and upgrading it ever since, of course. Um, and I would have students who would come to me very often, and especially when enrolling inside of MBA or getting into my content and being like, hey, I have ADHD. I am neurodivergent. I, you know, my brain doesn't function like a normal person. Would I be able to benefit from your course? And at the time, I was very interested in like, okay, I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, I know my husband is very ADHD. So like, let me kind of go talk to him first. And then it expanded from um, that to me asking, you know, my students and my peer mentors, like, hey, is anyone in here neurodivergent? Is anyone in here ADHD? Is anyone in here with, you know, so-and-so label that, you know, exists? And um, can you explain to me how manifestation works differently for you? Because I really want to help these students. I really want to make sure that my content is landing with people who have all kinds of different brains, right? And that's pretty much why in MBA, I have so many different tools and different options. And I make it like this big menu that you can choose from. And I don't believe that the same tools work for everyone. Okay. (laughs) This makes a lot more sense now why I came to that conclusion because hello. Um, But we'll get to that in a second. So yeah. So being the teacher I am, I started to interview these students and years of interviewing them, years of talking to them, I wouldn't get anywhere. And the reason being is because they would describe themselves to me and I would look at them and I would listen and I would read and however the conversations would go. And I would be like, hold on a second. I don't see the difference here. Like, I don't I don't see what's different here. I I don't get it. Right. Not like in a disrespectful way, but just like, huh, I think that's how my brain works then. And, you know, am I neurodivergent? Like, am I what? But I never let myself go there because I'm like, I feel like I would have known that by now. I'm 31 years old. I would have known that by now, right? And the thing is, is that I've also watched my husband over the last few years. And like I said, he's very distracted. He's very like easily distracted. Time doesn't exist for him in the same way that exists for other people. And I would like watch him and I would see how creative this man is and how intuitive this man is and how he would make connections that like other people don't make, even though he's distracted a lot of the times, right? And just doesn't function the same way as everyone else. And he used to be on medication for ADHD. And so I would often look at him and be like, this sounds like a superpower to me. So I started sharing with these students like, yo, I don't know too much about this, but it sounds like everything you're describing to me, if you do ba 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 it sounds like a superpower to me. Um, and then I hired a coach, uh, my coach, Andrea Crowder, that I've talked about plenty of times on the podcast. Uh, she says she has ADHD and I, you know, would ask her, Hey, can you describe your brain to me? Like, can you describe like your thinking process? What a day looks like? How do you know you have that? And she would describe this to me. And I'm like, that sounds a lot like me. And she's like, Catherine, I'm pretty sure you have ADHD too. And I'm like, do I though? I feel like I would have known this by now. (laughs) And so fast forward to the point that I want to get to. We're in South Africa with my mom, with my husband's parents and our son, and of course my husband. I forget how this conversation comes up, but I am talking to my mom and I'm like, mom, I feel like I really resonate with my neurodivergent friends. I feel like there's no difference between me and them, but they keep telling me that their brains are different. Like what is going on here? Should I get like checked out or something? Not that I feel like it's going to change my life, but just like, I'm just curious at this point. And she goes, Catherine, um, it makes sense because you were diagnosed with ADHD as a kid. And I remember looking at her like, wait, what? And she's like, yes, I was actually even pressured to put you on medication. And I remember specifically shooting that down because I didn't believe you needed medication. I didn't believe there's anything wrong with you. And I asked, all the specialists, all the teachers, everyone who would keep telling me, you know, she's really smart, but she's very distracted. She stares out the window. She doesn't pay attention to class. She can't focus, like all those things. I asked them to please, please, please never, ever tell you that you have ADHD. Never tell you that there's something wrong with you or that you're different from other kids. I, They, they promised me and they just never told you. And I'm like, 
what? I mean, guys, my mind was blown. And then I started, it was like, I had this, I had all of a sudden my whole life flashed before my eyes where I'm like, hold on a second, hold on a second. And I realized that all of the symptoms that most people categorize as like, this is, this comes with ADHD or being ADHD or being neurodivergent. I realized that my mom would actually use those and, and like use that to program me to believe that that's a good thing. For example, my mom would always tell me how smart I was. Like I never doubted my intelligence. That's something that I never had to doubt in my life because thankfully my mom told me that enough times where I believe that. And our parents are like gods as children. We absorb everything like sponges that our parents tell us. So if your parent keeps telling you, hey, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're going to grow up believing you're lazy even if you're not. If your parents say you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, even if you're not, you're going to believe it, right? So who knows? Like maybe I'm not that smart, but my mom always told me like you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. So I've never doubted my intelligence. She told me I'm an insanely fast processor, like on a genius level of processing, which comes with being ADHD. And so she like picked all of these symptoms, all of these things that would make me different from other kids or would make my brain, you know, different from how other people's brains worked. And she used that to program me to believe that these are superpowers and these are good things. And I've realized over the years that I've used those skill sets, essentially tools, skill sets, gifts, whatever you want to call it, the, the innate things that come with the way my brain is wired. And I flooded that into my manifestation journey. Those are the things that have made my manifestation journey the way that it is. The reason why I'm even in the career that I'm in right now is because of my ability to be able to hyper focus and hyper fixate on something, which is an ADHD quality, um, and really be a master researcher and dive into every single fucking detail about spirituality and manifestation and law of attraction. And that fascinated the shit out of me. So of course I had even more hyper-focus, hyper-fixation, obsession, 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 obsession. And the reason why I have such a successful career nowadays in the realm of manifestation, spirituality, law of attraction, and coaching is because of this quality that I was told was a really good thing. So I grew up believing that all the symptoms that made me neurodivergent is the reason why I was so gifted and talented and even put into gifted classes. I remember I was in very specific classes, which I think in retrospect, maybe we're all the other ADHD kids (laughs) together, but we were just never told that, right? We were just told we're like special in the sense of like we're talented and gifted and whatnot. And so it's really interesting for me, like how my mom essentially pulled an Albert Einstein on me. I don't know if you know this story. And I don't know if the story is true. Some people say it's true. Some people say it's not true. I like to believe it's true because at least for someone out there in the world, it's probably a true story. Like I'm sure it came from somewhere, whether it was associated with Albert Einstein or not. But let's just pretend the story is true and I'm just going to quickly tell it. So when Albert Einstein was nine years old, he was kicked out of school. He came home from school with a letter and he gave his mom a letter because he couldn't read. And so his mom read the letter and the mom read the letter to herself and with With tears in her eyes, she read the letter out loud to Albert Einstein. And what she said was, hey, Albert, the letter says that you are way too smart for the school. In fact, your intelligence is so high and you're such a genius and you're such an incredible student and you're such a fast learner that the school cannot keep up with you. The teachers have nothing to teach you. So the teacher is telling me to pull you out of school so that I can be your teacher because I don't think that the school can teach you what it needs to teach you. And so I'm going to take you to the pace that you need to be at. And so essentially she pulled him out of school told him it's because he's so smart. And um, Albert grew up, right, believing that and was homeschooled, I guess, by his mom or something like that. And then after his mom passed away, the story or so the story says, he found the letter and he read the letter from the school. And what the letter actually said was your son is mentally incapable of learning. He doesn't understand anything. He doesn't comprehend anything. He's so stupid that we have to kick him out of school. 
And so you're going to have, you're on your own, buddy, right? Like you're on your own to teaching him because we're not going to accept, you know, such a stupid kid or whatever it said. Okay. I'm just paraphrasing here, you guys. Again, the story could not be true, but I like to believe it's true. So then he realized, oh my God, all of these inventions, all of these scientific advancements, all of these explorations that Albert Einstein is, you know, accredited to or, or that we give credit for, his discoveries, all of those things might have not been possible if he grew up believing the actual letter and what the actual letter told his mom and what the teachers believed to be true about him. If he actually listened to what the teacher said, he may have not ever accomplished the incredible advancements that he ended up accomplishing. Like we look back at Albert Einstein as a genius of our time or the times before us, I guess. I don't even, this is so embarrassing, but does anyone know when he actually was alive and died? Because <laughs> right now I don't. But anyway, that's besides the point. So I was like, mom, you pulled a fucking Albert Einstein, Einstein on me. And she's like, I know. And, you know, my mom even told me like, you know, as parents, you don't know if you're doing the right thing. I don't know if I was doing the right thing. I just took a risk and I just decided that that's not actually going to help you, especially now that I think back and look back. Right. I think that now people are recognizing that ADHD is a superpower and that there's all these positive things to it. And there's so many tools and help that people can get with managing the symptoms and the things that make like the day to day life a little bit harder than for most people. Um, but back then, I don't think that there was as many tools or as many resources or as much support. So who would have known how I would have grown up? Like, for example, um, you know, some of the people that I know that were diagnosed with ADHD as kids and were told that as kids, they had to go on medication and they were told that they're like unruly and can't be contained and have trouble sitting down and have trouble focusing and that they're, you know, not as smart as other kids or whatever. And it's interesting because I even told my mom, like, well, maybe just maybe the fucking traditional school system was boring as fuck. So maybe that was the root cause. <laughs> maybe that was the actual problem. Maybe it wasn't the fact that these kids were neurodivergent. Maybe it's because school should be inclusive of all different brain types. Hmm. Let's think about that for a second, right? But anyway, my point is, is I didn't grow up believing that I had some disability. I didn't believe that I wasn't destined for success because of the way my brain was wired or that I would never amount to anything because I mixed up numbers in school, which happened all the fucking time. Now I look back in retrospect and I'm like, oh my God, the amount of numbers I've mixed up on math tests, which is dyscalculia, dyscalculia, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, that makes sense. Or, you know, I spent most of my time staring out the window in class. I spent most of my time daydreaming. I lived such a crazy imagination as a kid. I couldn't tell you anything that I learned in school. Like I, it's like memories of school. I remember sitting at a table with kids, but I remember just being in my own imaginary land for most of the time. Right. And, you know, I, I don't look at it as like, um, that I would never amount to anything because I hated how boring school was or because I was overly sensitive or I remember being a very sensitive kid. In fact, I'm still a very sensitive kid inside of me. You know, I'm still very like sensitive to lights and sounds and and things like that. And I'm like, huh, this makes so much fucking sense, mom. Like, thank you so much for revealing this finally to me, not because it's going to change my life drastically or anything like that, but it's just I finally can make sense of things. So I didn't grow up with the label, you guys. And I think that that served me in such an incredible way. And I think that that just goes to show you, like, be really careful with what labels you associate with. Be really careful with what diagnoses you associate with. Be really careful with what stories people tell you around what this means. And again, I'm not saying that there's something inherently wrong with labels and diagnoses. Like, it's a matter of language, right? And just like anything can be empowering or disempowering, just depending on your perspective and how you twist it and how you reframe it. I think that in some cases it can be powerful because again, like I said, when I was, when I finally figured out I have BII, which is essentially, wait, what does it mean? What does BII mean? What does it stand for? I feel, I know what it is, but for some reason my brain is like, what does it stand for? When my breast, oh, breast implant illness. Thank you, brain. Uh, breast implant illness. So when I finally realized, okay, I have breast implant illness, I knew that my 
route of action, that the action that I'm going to take is to remove my implants. Otherwise, before, if I didn't come to that conclusion, I would still be in this confusion of like, why do I feel like shit? I don't know why I feel like shit. There's something wrong with me, but I can't figure out what's wrong with me, right? Or with the mold toxicity, like I can't lose weight. I have brain fog. I have this, that, and whatever. And so, oh, okay, now I have the action steps that I can take to mitigate it or to get rid of something or to dive into something more or to amplify something or to diminish something or whatever. Like there's tools that I now have. So that's the nuance here. But I am incredibly, incredibly grateful to my mom. I also truly believe that God would never give a brain to someone in the way that it's wired if it wasn't directly going to help them fulfill on their dharma, fulfill on their life purpose, and fulfill on their mission. And that's a huge lesson for me to see because I want to get into the five reasons why I believe that someone with ADHD can actually be an even more powerful manifester than someone with a more normal brain and not to like create separation or this is better than, you know, and this other person's less than, but just like to give the people who feel like this is a disability or this is like a disempowering thing, I want to show you that it's actually a superpower. So the first thing is the ability, number one, the ability to hyper fixate and hyper focus. So I feel like so many people come, you know, to me when it comes to manifestation as a manifestation teacher or just like complaints that I've heard in general around people having ADHD is the inability to focus, right? Like I have a really hard time focusing and guys, it's actually laughable when I try to clean my house or when I try to do laundry or cook something, I figured out finally why I hate it so much and why I now have a full-time housekeeper and a chef in my home, right? Thankfully, I'm so grateful that I can afford it, so grateful that I can delegate these things. This is the reason why I also have a team on Team MB (laughs) because the amount of time it takes me By the time I pull out a knife from my kitchen drawer to chop a vegetable, I'm thinking about how my drawer is so dirty and so disorganized. And then I start cleaning my drawer and organizing the forks, knives, and spoons and whatever. By the time I finish that, I'm like, wait, there's more dishes in the sink. By the time I put the dishes away in the sink, I'm like, wait, I'm cooking. Hold on. I need this other ingredient. I open my fridge and I go, huh, wait, I'm missing this, 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 and this, and whatever. And then I'm like, okay, I need to go and Instacart this immediately. I go on my phone and I put groceries into my Instacart app. By the time I do that, I get lost on social media. Somehow I'm on Instagram now. Now I'm scrolling. Now I'm like, ooh, that recipe looks awesome. Let me try cooking that instead. Then I'm like, hold on a second. I was cooking this ground beef for example. Um, Let me get back to the ground beef that I was originally making. Okay, what's my next ingredient? By the time I go to my refrigerator again, I notice something that's out of place on my dining room table by the time. (laughs) So you guys can see how my brain functions, right? But the ability to hyper-focus and hyper-fixate is the ability to focus on something with intensity for a really, really long time. So have we ever considered that maybe, just maybe, the things that we are so distracted by, the things that aren't sticking in our brains are the things that are not actually supposed to be there. Like we're not actually supposed to engage with it. This is not in alignment with our zone of genius. I think very often to how when I was in pre-med classes, when I was in biology, when I was in chemistry, when I was in physics, I remember so often being like, I don't know what the fuck these professors are saying. I can't focus on what they're saying for the life of me. Like I just, it just isn't processing in my brain. And then I discovered online business and selling shakes online and selling workout programs online on Facebook and online marketing. And I hyper fixated like you wouldn't believe on that. And I spent so much time and energy and resources just diving in and diving in and diving in and diving in and diving in. And And I could have judged myself and been like, no, Catherine, you're supposed to become a doctor, right? You're not supposed to be distracted by this online business thing. You're supposed to become a doctor. Like maybe, just maybe, I wasn't supposed to become a doctor. And that's why I couldn't actually focus on my classes that had to do with becoming a doctor and why I spent so much free time 
learning how to build an online business and at the same time also hyper focusing and hyper fixating on manifestation and law of attraction and personal development. I could listen to personal development eight hours a day every single day, right? So it's not this inability to focus per se. I think that this is a massive gift because our intuition is always leading us into the things that naturally align with us and align with our soul purpose and align with our soul destiny. And the things that naturally light us up are the things that we can then hyper-focus and hyper-fixate on. And those are the things that are actually in alignment with where we want to go and actually in alignment with our manifestations. So have we ever considered that? And I think about that a lot. When people tell me, oh, I can't focus, it's like maybe you're not supposed to be focusing on that thing in the first place. Maybe you can't focus in the manifestation process on a particular desire because you don't actually want it. So really diving into, do you actually want it or do you just think that you want it or that you should want it, right? I just truly believe that things that you don't want to focus on just aren't worth your time. And maybe you can't stick with a manifestation tool like writing down your desires 55 times a day in a row for like 17 days straight, you know, those rituals that some people get really into, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just, it's not for everyone. Not every tool is for everyone. Maybe meditation's not for you. You can't sit still in meditation. Maybe meditation's not for you. Maybe you have a hard time visualizing. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe there's a different way that you can explore how visualization works for you and do it with that. For me, visualization, actually, even though I am very visual, For me, I need to play a song to keep me on track with visualization. So that's why I love visualizing to music. I figured out my tools. The tools that are actually meant for me are the ones that I genuinely enjoy and am able to stick with for a particular time. So that's all a sign and things that you want to pay attention to. And this is actually what makes you a better manifester because once you get in locked in on a desire or an area of life or a version of reality that you want to manifest, like you are going to take it to the fucking end. And you think that you're going to lack focus? No, baby. You're going to have so much focus. You're going to take it to the end. You're going to have so much more energy for it than you can ever imagine. And you're going to manifest that thing in the end. And then delegation is your superpower. So learning to delegate the rest of the things in your life as much as you possibly can or using tools to help you with management. Like there's a reason why, again, I have a team. I have a chef. I have a housekeeper is because my goodness, (laughs) my priorities are my son, my husband and my like creative work. So recording these podcasts and writing content and posting online and making courses and selling courses. Like that's my zone of genius. So if I get lost in all these other tasks, then I wouldn't be as successful in my business. The next thing is we are, so this is number two, we are creative and intuitive as fuck. Okay. So my mom always heard from my teachers, of course, she daydreams too much. She spends way too much time in the clouds. She spends way too much time in her imagination. Well, that's a fucking gift. And that has a lot to do with manifestation. Why? First of all, intuition is key in manifestation because we're always being guided towards our manifestation with intuition. I don't know if you know this, but at any moment in time, our subconscious mind or subconscious brain is processing what I think it's like two point something billion bits per second. And our conscious mind can only filter about 40 bits per second, bits of information. With people who are neurodivergent or people who have ADHD, we can actually process more. So we have the ability to process more information, to filter through more information than a neurotypical person, which means that we are more likely to hear our intuition better than others. And we can actually identify more patterns. So ha 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 on me. You know, when I always tell you guys, one of my gifts is recognizing patterns. I'm really good at recognizing patterns. Well, that's starting to make sense now because that is very common amongst neurodivergent people. So we can identify more patterns and we have this superb 
pattern recognition ability, which makes identifying things that are out of the ordinary so much easier. So we can get locked into someone's like body language. So we can literally see, you know, our conscious minds are processing that, you know, this person's saying one thing, but their body language is saying something else and something feels off. And my intuition is telling me not to work with this person or not to get in a relationship with this person or uh, vice versa. Maybe it's like my intuition's telling me, like, even though they're not perfect on paper and there's some missing things, you know, in terms of like life partners, maybe there are some characteristics that I would have liked instead or whatever. For some reason, my intuition's telling me that this is a yes. Like, this is my partner. This is my person. This is my husband. This is my wife, et cetera, et cetera. You end up listening to your intuition and they end up becoming, you know, your soulmate, the love of your life. You realize like, oh my God, thank God I listened to my intuition. So we actually have more of that. It's not like we're more intuitive in the sense that like some people are intuitive and some people are not. I think that everyone's intuitive, but I think that we get that information faster. We can be incredibly psychic. We can be incredibly spiritual. We're just very connected to that spiritual domain. And that's a fucking superpower. Now, in terms of creativity, like the ability to see solutions where other people just see problems, I don't even have to explain to you why that's a superpower. That just is a superpower. We're incredibly innovative. Um, We don't take no for an answer. We can figure anything out. There's no telling us that something is impossible. If it's important to us, we will figure it out. And again, that bleeds right into hyperfocus, hyperfixation. And then we make incredible artists. Um, we're incredible visionaries and we're big picture thinkers, which this is very helpful, especially when, you know, some people have a tendency to get really stuck in the how of how something's going to manifest and all the little details. And the thing is, is that the details and the how is not your job in the first place. So what a fucking benefit to forget about all the details. I forget details all the time. I'm a very big picture person. I'm a very big picture thinker. And so that is great because in manifestation, that's actually very helpful for me. Number three can be seen as a negative, but also as a positive. And I'll explain in just a second why. Staying calm in chaos in high stress environments is a superpower of ours. Um, And that's because we're more adaptable to life's uncertainties and changes. So I don't know if you notice, but life can be uncertain right? The external circumstances that are outside of our control can feel chaotic sometimes. There's crazy shit happening in the world. And people who have ADHD are able to stay more calm in chaos than people who are more neurotypical. The reason being, there's a scientific reason, and I'm going to explain it, is because we have more theta wavelengths than the average person. The average person has more beta wavelengths. We have more theta wavelengths. Now, beta helps with concentration. So that's like a good thing for those people. But theta, what theta is, is essentially linked to heightened creativity. It's linked to heightened intuition. It is the wavelength of the subconscious mind. In fact, when we are being hypnotized, our brain goes into the theta wavelength state. In the theta wavelength state, you are more programmable. Now, that can be negative, of course, but in a positive sense, when we want to reprogram our brains, we actually have an easier time than someone who is neurotypical because our brains are already in the more hypnotic state, which is why we spend more time in the clouds. And so the affirmations that we tell ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves and the things that we do to program our brains actually work faster for us and we have an easier time with it than someone who has less theta wavelengths. So theta is associated with relaxation. So we're more relaxed in chaos, making us more adaptable to life's uncertainties. So when things fall apart or, you know, they fall apart before they fall back together, which happens all the fucking time in the manifestation process, right? You got to remove the old car out of your garage before you park your new car. And that uncertainty when the old car leaves before the new car comes in, that little gap that we all freak out in, for whatever reason, those theta wavelengths help us stay in a more calm, relaxed state. And the more calm and relaxed you are, the more your nervous system is regulated in those circumstances, in those instances, 
the more you are likely to manifest positive outcomes. A lot of people can fuck this shit up because when life starts to fall apart, they get really stressed out. They go into hypervigilance. They go into a freeze state. They go into a fight state. They go into a flight state. Their nervous system gets so dysregulated that then that affects their vibration. And when the new thing comes in to replace the old thing, like the new foundation comes to replace the old foundation, the old reality, we can fuck shit up if we're not calm in the presence of that. So whoop-de-doo, a great benefit to being neurodivergent is that you're more likely to stay calm, which is great. I already said this, but more theta wavelengths, again, I have notes in front of me, uh, can program ourselves much easier. So I just wanted to say that again, because I think that that needs to be used to our advantage. Uh, Number four, again, this can be looked at as a negative, but it's also a huge positive. We're going to go with the positive outlook. Higher risk tolerance is a symptom of having ADHD. So how I see this as a good thing is we are more likely to go after what we want and be courageous about it. So for whatever reason I don't remember right now, people with ADHD have higher risk tolerance. Now that can manifest in addictions, that can manifest in gambling, that can manifest in like doing crazy shit and putting our lives at risk. Yes, of course, there is that extreme, not the best uh, thing, you know, but think about it in the positive sense. Manifestation is all about bringing the unseen into the scene. It's about having faith in what hasn't happened yet. It's about taking action on something where you literally have no proof on whether or not it's going to succeed, okay? Someone with a lower risk tolerance is less likely to take action purely based on faith on the unseen. And someone who has a higher risk tolerance is more likely to be like, fuck it, I'm diving in. And I find throughout my lifetime, especially when I decided to go all in on manifestation, for whatever reason, I felt very comfortable with the chaos of it all makes sense now. And I just said, fuck it. Like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm already living on my grandma's couch. I'm already at the lowest point that I believe that I can get to, which is living with my grandma in her living room on her couch, feeling like a sore loser and not having any clue what's going to happen of my life. I felt like that was already the worst case scenario. So, oh my God, it's only, it can only get better from here. Because if I fail, I can just come back to my grandma's couch, right? And so that gave me the courage. My higher risk tolerance allows me to constantly leap, take leaps of faith that have served me time and time and time and time again. And, you know, they say the the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And I truly believe it. And if bigger risks don't feel risky to you, it's only going to make the act of acting on faith that much easier for you. Number five, we're extremely fast learners. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but I'll make this my last for now for the sake of time. We're extremely fast learners. So when we're excited to learn something, we go fucking deep. We become masters at things. And this is really helpful in the manifestation process because you know, we're extremely fast processors. So, and this is what my mom would always tell me, like, Catherine, you're an extremely fast processor. So I always believe that about myself. And I feel like that's what helped me learn so quickly and just be able to just like get what I need and then take it and run with it. I'm able to take skill sets and tools and apply them to my life immediately and just run with them. Be like, oh, this works for me. No, this doesn't. Like this works for me. Yes, I'm going to take it and go. This doesn't work for me. I'm going to, you know, leave it. It's not, it's not for me. And any skill set or tool that we need to pick up on along the way to manifesting our goals. So let's say your dream career requires you to pick up on some tools and skill sets and knowledge. Guess what? You can really condense time. You can really collapse timelines because you're just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Got it. Learned it. Thank you. Bye. And you're just really good at absorbing the knowledge quickly. So those are my five superpowers. The five things that, you know, being neurodivergent has made me a powerful manifester, five reasons why. 
So I shared a little bit about this episode on Instagram and you guys were so excited to hear this episode. So I hope you love this episode. And if you want me to dive into anything from like a tools, hacks, perspectives that I've used my entire life now to help me be the best version of me and operate at a higher level in life and just generally keep myself on track. Because again, I didn't have this knowledge. I didn't know that this is how I operated, but I realized that I needed certain tools and certain skill sets and certain perspectives and certain hacks to help me just integrate more into day-to-day life and become the most successful version of myself. Um, So if you want to hear any of my tips that I have for how I keep organized, stay organized, how I manage my time, how I see things differently, and that's helped me just really yeah, be the best version of me. Let me know if you want that episode. I feel like that's a nice transition from this episode into that one because I can only say so much in an episode. Um, I can easily talk for five hours, but I highly doubt you want a five hour long episode. So we got to break it down somehow. Yeah, I can definitely do that in a future episode. So if you benefited from this, I would love it if you could share it with someone else. Um, Someone who really needs to hear this message, of course, is going to be the most ideal person you share it with. I really appreciate all the reviews that you guys leave me on the podcast apps. So whether you're listening on Apple or you're listening on Spotify, I really, like you have no idea, really appreciate the reviews. I love reading them. I just love knowing that you guys love the podcast as much as I do. Um, And then if you're on YouTube, if you can subscribe, if you can like, if you can comment, leave some sort of engagement that, of course, helps the channel as well for anyone who loves video podcasts. Um, Don't want to exclude them from finding this podcast. So the engagement definitely helps the channel grow. And with that being said, I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. You are so incredible. You're so powerful. You're so amazing. I just want you to know that I believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself right now, I believe in you and I believe that you can accomplish anything and everything that you could possibly ever desire and want in your life and that your desires are truly your destiny. So with that being said, I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.